Mohamed Buhari signs instrument ratifying a number of agreements. The evil of hate speech resonates as the National Broadcasting Commission celebrates 25th anniversary just as experts allocate legislation, enforcement and public enlightenment to reduce carnage on roads. A grand rally in support of President Mohamed Buhari. Northern Nigerian youths suspend quit notice. A very good evening to you and welcome to tonight's Network News, reaching you live from Abuja, the nation's capital. I'm Phil Obano. In our Lagos studio is Ademola. while Nana Aisha is in Sokoto. Now, a coalition of northern, northern groups has announced the suspension of the relocation order known as quit order earlier given in Kaduna declaration by the groups. This was during a world media briefing in Abuja Abdullah Garba Benikudu has a report. The position of northern groups comprising of fourteen different interest groups took the decision in the presence of chairman Northern Governors Forum, Northern Elders Forum and some notable Igbo leaders while affirming their allegiance to one Nigeria and peaceful coexistence. They advised government to come up with clear laws against hate speeches and other divisive tendencies in the country. And as cultured people, with a tradition of respect for our national values, leaders and elders, we are today pleased to announce the immediate suspension of the relocation clause, <laughs> otherwise referred to as the quit notice from the Kaduna Declaration. The chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, Governor Kashim Shatima, and other leaders commended the groups for treating the path of peace. How we manage those emotions separates us as reasonable, as matured, as tolerant people. The Father, but not only the Igbos, north, north and the south and southeast, but it's north and south, south and north and southwest. We should to make as a population of Nigeria with 170 million Nigerians. It's a great country. We should work together to move this country forward. We are Nigerians. I said it on many occasions that uh, we are Nigerians. We subscribe to the unity and peaceful existence of this country. The suspension of the quit notice order was reached after a series of meetings and consultations facilitated by the Northern Governors Forum and other leaders in the region. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Brunokudu, NTA News. And joining me now is Abdulaziz Suleiman, spokesperson for Northern Coalition, Coalition of Northern Groups. Welcome to the news. Thank you very much. Now, we just heard a suspension of the quit notice. Uh, one would have um, thought that an uh, outright withdrawal would um, be what we are looking at. So why not withdraw in instead of suspension? You see, to even uh, suspend it is, uh, I think, a step in the right direction. Because we, there are so many uh, issues that led us to making the Karuna Declaration in which the quit notice is inserted. Uh, you see, just by suspending it, is to ease the mounting tension as 1st October comes closer. But we still have issues that have not been resolved. So, uh, so we have to monitor events as they unfold and see what further steps we'll take. But it's our hope that uh, it will finally be withdrawn completely because we really, by our attitude, did not uh, show that we want trouble in the country. What we wanted was primarily to force the hitherto neglected Biafran issue onto the nation's uh, discussion agenda, which we have done. Uh, initially, uh, it was neglected. Nobody was talking about it. Uh, people were silent, governments, uh, leaders, and uh, 
almost everybody. But after making the Kanuna declaration and using that uh, sledgehammer, uh, people started talking. We have met, for instance, with uh, quite a number of Igbo uh, groups, the Ohanese, the Eze and Igbo of the 19 northern states. Uh, even some IPOB officials uh, have contacted us, and we met. We uh, we met with a number of uh, Igbo leaders, uh, former governors, some political leaders too, and we have come to understand that uh, it's not all of them, as was the initial perception. You see, their silence initially uh, gave the impression that they were all endorsing the uh, violent agitation, uh, the violent brand of agitation adopted by the current agitators. Uh, that was why we lumped them together and said, now since you people want your country, you've even established a country with uh, all the government uh, institutions in place, and nobody is talking about it. I uh, think so we you just better leave our country because we are Nigerians. Okay, okay. Now, um, from your uh, submission so far, it's obvious that you agree that some mileage has been achieved in terms of a meeting yeah, of uh, uh, everyone mm. some way. Yeah. So how soon can one begin to expect something close to a withdrawal? You see, we have to watch events. As you can see, government has stepped in also. Government has decisively stepped in. Uh, but it was not uh, acting on it before. But government has decisively stepped in, and we are sure we are going to see uh, changes. Uh, you see, we are not saying we are not brothers, we are not, we are not Nigerians with these people. They said they are not Nigerians, they are Biafrans, and that they are American arms. So we said, okay, please leave our communities, because we cannot risk having you with, amongst us. Now that they've come out plainly, especially the ones living in the north, they have spoken to us, they have spoken publicly that they are not with that agitation. Okay, that, that definitely is a huge step in, a the huge right step in the right direction. Thank yeah. you very much, yeah. Abdulaziz Suleiman, spokesperson, Coalition of Northern Groups, for joining us on the Network News at 9. Now, moving on, Mohamed Buhari has formally ratified international agreements between Nigeria and other entities. This is in furtherance of his administration's renewed onslaught against corruption, insecurity, and economic sabotage. Status correspondent Adamu Sambu has the details. At a colorful ceremony attended by relevant members of the diplomatic community, President Muhammad Buhari executed the instruments of ratification of the agreements on behalf of Nigeria pursuant to the powers conferred on him by Section 5, Subsection 1, A and B of the Constitution, as well as Article 7 of the 1969 Vienna Convention on Laws of Treaties. The agreements include those of mutual legal assistance in criminal, civil, and commercial matters, transfer of sentenced persons, as well as extradition treaty. Others are charter for the Lake Chad Basin between Nigeria, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Libya, Niger, and Chad. African Tax Administration Forum Agreement on Mutual Assistance in Tax Matters, as well as World Intellectual Property Organization performances on phonograms and audiovisual treaties were also ratified. So also the Marrakesh Treaty to facilitate access to published works for persons who are blind, visually impaired, or otherwise. President Muhammad Buhari described the event as an important milestone in demonstration of Nigeria's sovereign capacity to fulfill her international obligations for the benefit of the nation's economy, security, and the fight against corruption. It is my hope that these instruments, which are signed today, will reinvigorate the anti-corruption move and check the illicit flow of funds out of our country to other jurisdictions, improve national security, food security, boost our economic and tax regimes, and improve the overall well-being of our creative community. Nigeria, President Buhari said, is now in a position to utilize these agreements, also replicated in the United Arab Emirates, to foster cooperation between their respective authorities for the purpose of prosecuting the nation's anti-corruption campaign. All agencies of government 
with roles to play under the respective treaties now ratified are hereby directed to ensure that they play their anticipated roles in an effective and responsible manner in order to ensure that we reap the full benefit of these agreements. Minister of Justice Abu Bakr Malami gave details on some of the agreements signed by the president, which he described as in the best interest of Nigeria. This agreement of mutual legal assistance in criminal matters between Nigeria and United Arab Emirates will constitute a core component of our anti-corruption strategy, given the prominence of the United Arab Emirates as an investment destination for many Nigerians some of whom have unfortunately seen that country as a heaven to invest wealth illicitly acquired from Nigeria. The decision to engage in the World Intellectual Property Organization performances on audiovisuals and pornograms treaty is intended to protect the works of creative industry, including Nollywood, which has expanding component of our gross domestic product. It will be recalled that the Federal Executive Council has already approved all the agreements now ratified by the President, but their full implementation was however delayed as a result of the need by both sides to conclude their respective ratification processes. From the State House, Adam Sambu, NTA News. The federal government's drive to consolidate Nigeria's content in the nation's oil and gas industry and accelerate the economic recovery and growth plan progresses as qualified Nigerians with requisite skills to execute projects can now benefit from a $2 million intervention fund. Minister of State Petroleum Resources Dr. Emmanuel Ibe Kachiku launched the initiative supervised by the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board and Bank of Industry. Over now to energy correspondent Hawa Saliu Adama. Statistics indicate that about 2 million job opportunities and $380 billion in capital flight were lost by Nigeria in the oil and gas industry due to the inability of local players to actively participate in country in 50 years. It is now seven years that the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board came on board. With a mandate to develop local capacity, about five of the $20 billion annual industry spend is now retained in country, representing 26%. However, funding challenge remains a major clog in the goal of a 70% in-country value retention, a challenge which the launch of the $200 million intervention fund at a single-digit interest rate is expected to increase. For the Minister of State Petroleum Resources and major players, it is a demonstration of transformational leadership as all qualified Nigerian contractors in the oil and gas sector can access the loans. Uh, it's, it's not just enough to do the policies, you need to back it up with funds. So for me, it's very critical to the success of growing local skills, growing local companies, ensuring that we meet some of the targets that we're setting for ourselves in terms of uh, lo local participation. And our PETA members have been, you know, you make profits, the banks take them as interest and everything. It's really going to impact in the oil and gas activity. Matters concerning the development of the oil producing state, this is one of it, and which will go a long way in making peace. We also wanted the funds to accumulate, and we also wanted to set out a very transparent process in the spirit of this present administration to ensure that there is a proper utilization of the fund, there is a clear line of sight, and there is honesty in how it is implemented. Nigerian Content Development Act came into being in 2010 solely to boost the participation of indigenous players through value addition across the chain. In Abuja, Amhawa Salihu Adama, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshinbaju was earlier today in Taraba State, where he held meetings with government officials and inaugurated projects executed by Governor Ishaku Dixon's administration. Vice President, accompanied by the Minister of Women Affairs, inaugurated five hectare greenhouse producing vegetables, including 250 tons of tomatoes per hectare. Vice President Oshibaju says the greenhouse project is one of the smartest ways to produce vegetables all year round. He noted that agricultural sector of the economy, including processing, 
will provide a lot of jobs for the teaming youths nationwide. Oshibaju declared that the federal government will continue to support states that are keen on developing agricultural sector. The National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has been challenged to ensure that airing broadcast stations that promote hate speeches and fake news are sanctioned. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed handed down the challenge in his address at the annual National Broadcasting Commission's lecture and 25th anniversary of the commission in Abuja. Anthony Forsen has this report. The gathering was a full representation of those who matter in the nation's broadcasting space. All of them gathered for the annual NBC lecture series, as well as felicitate with the commission at 25. However, for the commission, its recorded successes is under threat. The threat of it losing grip of the space it is expected to regulate. Hate speech, disinformation, fake news, funny of the embers of the unity and undermining the peace and security of the nation, the name of politics must stop. As the NBC celebrates what is a milestone, a quarter of a century in its existence, I urge the Commission to redouble its efforts in discharging its mandate. The NBC must ensure a strict adherence to the broadcasting code, and errant stations must be sanctioned accordingly to serve as a deterrent. The minister was equally quick to make the point that the President Muhammadu Buhari-led administration cannot be put in bad light, saying the hate speech and fake news phenomenon is targeted at the federal government. Your Eminence, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, no amount of hatred being orchestrated by the naysayers will prevent honest and patriotic Nigerians from seeing the strides being made by this administration at a difficult time in the history of our nation. What is required is the support of all Nigerians to enable their country to assume its rightful place in the Committee of Nations and make life more bearable for our citizens. Lending his voice to the charge by the Information and Culture Minister, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar III, said NBC must act and act fast to serve as deterrent to others. We have laws in our various law statutes, but what we require or what we lack sort of implementing those laws, and therefore we lend our very strong support, 100%, the federal government, especially on the speech of the acting president then, who is the vice president, to criminalize and refer hate speech as terrorism. But I think, I think it's very, very apt. President Muhammadu Buhari has consistently asserted that Nigeria is going to leverage on the new digital revolution to create a national digital economy targeted at creating opportunities and accesses for our country's very creative young people. With the theme of the lecture on cosmopolitanism, Nigeria ethnic politics, and the communication hate, discussions will again be targeting at finding a lasting solution to the trend. In Abuja, Anthony Forsen, NTA News. And a grand rally in support of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration and safe return from medical vacation has held in Kano. Organized under the auspices of the Conference of Patriotic Nigerians, Mohamed Rabi Ali reports that two rakat prayers were offered for the speedy recovery of the president. The rally, which began from Koformata through Obasanjo Road to State Road and terminated at the government house, Kano, was led by the senior special assistant to the president of National Assembly, House of Representatives Matters, Abdurrahman Kausmela, Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduje, who received hundreds of the supporters, commended the organizers, saying God has answered their prayers. Senior Special Assistant to the President on House of Representatives and Personal Assistant on Broadcast Media, Shaban Ibrahim Sharada, acknowledged the turnout of Kano people, saying the return of President Muhammad Buhari is a good omen to Nigerians. 
We are here to show to the world that we are Kano. We bought Buhari here with almost 2 million bucks. Therefore, after two years, we justify our position that we are with Mr. President. Members of the Conference of Patriotic Nigerians submitted a letter to Governor Ganduji for onward transmission to President Buhari. We Nigerians were telling them that we are united, we are behind President Muhammad Buhari solidly, and we are telling them that there is nobody comparable to his qualities. All say thanks to Almighty Allah for bringing him alive and sound. Earlier, Turok Ad prayer was observed at the Sana Abate Stadium, led by Sheikh Muddin and Al Majri, for the speedy recovery of President Muhammad Buhari. The rally brought together members of patriotic Nigerians from the southern states of the Northwest Zone. From Kano, Muhammad Rabi Ali, MTA News. A reminder that you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Ahead on the news tonight, one dies as the Nigerian Air Force Air Beetle aircraft crashes in Kaduna. We will be back. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. I was distressed to notice that some of the comments, especially in the social media, have crossed our national red lines by daring to question our collective existence as a nation. This is a step too far. One nation bound in freedom. Peace and unity. Nigeria. One nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. How many locations competition is in? Who knows? Six in Lagos, eight in Abuja, and opening another in Abba next week. Who is it, guy? No man. Moses was at Chelsea. Then he went to Liverpool. But before that, he was at Crystal Palace 2007. Joined Chelsea 2012. 42 career goals. Mm. <laughs> this coffee is nice. I wonder where it's from. This blend is actually from Brazil. However, coffee originated in Ethiopia in the 13th century. Wow. Connect from any network with Glow My Fi. Share and enjoy 4G data speeds on any 2G or 3G device nationwide. Yes, Ah, flavor. Your name is Trinidu Okoli, born 1983. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, Trinidu. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Hey, now who they here? My name now Mr. Shortcut. I demand my money. Now cheap, cheap one, I they buy. Than that, we sign. Now don't buy cheap one. <laughs> Hey, now what can you on for my yard? A cheap building material where we take build my office. I just say I deserve money. Office building collapse. And fire burn my house. Hey, hey. You don't see what happened to Mr. Shortcut? Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria, S-O-N, don't ready for action and say enough of pain, loss and wastage. And if you see product when no day correct, call the S-O-N office when near you. Or S-O-N app desk. Standards Organization of Nigeria. Improving life through standards. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. 
be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Bayes University Abuja offers world-class education, uninterrupted academic session, and promising degrees. Bayes University Abuja is affordable and delivers quality with experienced international staff, superb facilities, overseas external examiners, and a serene academic atmosphere. We offer quality and affordable education, and students are within easy reach of their parents here at Bayes University Abuja. So learn to live at Bayes University for a brighter future. For more information, visit our website at www.baseuniversity.edu.ng or call 081-3376-9657 or 081-3376-9658. Bayes University Abuja. Learn to live. Change do not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being law-abiding citizens. Thanks for staying on. The Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja Thursday dismissed the appeal of Senator George Sekibo challenging the decision of the Rivers Election Petition Tribunal that obtained his election as Senator representing Rivers East for lack of merit. The court upholds the decision of the Rivers State National and State Assembly's election that sat in Abuja. Dele Atumbi has the report. In the case of Senator Sekibo of the PDP and Andu Isendu of the APC, the tribunal that has Justice Gaudi and Nuneho in June 2017 ordered the removal of Sekibo as a senator representing Rivers East, Senator Dick Street. The tribunal ordered the immediate replacement of Sekibo with Andrew Sendu of the APC as the winner of the election. This decision of the tribunal is what Senator Sekibo brought before the appellate court. In his judgment, Justice Adamu Jauru dismissed the appeal for lack of merit, pointing out that the lower court was correct in its decision by returning Andrew Isendu of the APC as the duly elected senator for Rivers East. In another judgment by the appellate court, Justice Adewale Abiru upheld the election of Senator Magnus Habi of the APC by dismissing the appeal of Johnson Nwogu of the PDP. Just Sabiru maintained that the issues raised by Nwogu in his petition challenging the electoral victory of Magnus Abbey were criminal in nature and were not proved beyond reasonable doubt. In the third appeal on Rivers West senatorial election, Justice Mohamed Mustafa dismissed the appeal brought by Otelemeba Makri of the APC against Senator Osinat Shuko Ideozu of the PDP. With this judgment, the All Progressive Congress now has two senators why the People's Democratic Party has won from River State. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. And in another judicial matter, the Nigeria Police Force has arranged two suspects at the Wuse Magistrate Court Abuja for allegedly giving false information to the force, an offence punishable under Section 97 of the Penal Code. Chukunonso Wambos reports that one of the accused persons, Mr. Mandeweke, pleaded guilty to the charges. 
The first defendant, Mondi Nweke, having saved the court from the rigors of food trial by pleading guilty to the two-count charge bordering on misinforming the prosecutor, in this case the Nigeria Police Force of cash of Arms and Ammunition at numbers 510, 511 and 512 Wushishi Crescent, Otako District, Abuja, and number 1 River Kubani Crescent, Maitama District, Abuja, belonging to Dahiru Manga. Magistrate Musa Abdul Enaya, in his ruling, handed a reduced sentence of one month imprisonment with an option of fine of 20 thousand naira to the convict while september 20th has been fixed for hearing in the case of the sole defendant richard abba meanwhile the nigeria police force has described as untrue a publication in one of the national dailies credited to the chairman of the senate committee on navy senator Issa haman misao captioned bribe for promotion First public relations officer Jim Omoshu, who made the denial at a media brief inside the senator who declined to appear before a special investigation panel set up by the inspector general of police over an earlier publication credited to him, has no moral ground to accuse the force without any substantive evidence. The police spokesman therefore called on the Senate's Ethics and Privileges Committee to look into the issues for the overall interest of the National Assembly and the image of the police. In Abuja, Chukunon Sonwa NTN News. And I am now being joined by the Force Public Relations Officer, CSP Jimo Mushud. Thanks for joining us in the studio. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, good evening, Nigerians. N now, can you throw some more light on the situation we have at hand? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, early hour of today, uh, the Nigerian Police Force uh, charged to court Monday in Wiki and uh, Richard Akwan. Uh, if you watch your report, I've been tracked discovered that the first suspect pleaded guilty to the charge. Uh, this brings to light the need uh, for people to be sure of what they are telling the police. Because when you mislead the police to take some certain action, uh, which ordinarily is supposed not to have been taken against other individuals, you have to face the music. Uh, I want to <coughs> make it abundantly clear that nothing is an offense. I said what the law says an offence, and the law stating the offence, we call it the procedure and the punishment for such an offender. Uh, they were charged to call for giving false information because uh, earlier I approached the police and told the police that there are two locations in Otaku and Maitama where firearms and ammunition have been offloaded and kept. And uh, we work on this information. Uh, we call it, uh, work with them to ensure that 24 hours before that, and they should still be sure of the information they are giving us. So as at the time we moved in, uh, we don't know the, uh, the residence that belong to those two personalities. Uh, the one in Maitama, number one, River Kubani, Crescent Maitama, belong to Alajidai Manga, who is a businessman. And that of Utaku belong to one, Mr. Kamba. So these two residences, police went in there, we searched one at one, discovered that there's nothing like that. No traces of such were there. So we have to take them to court under the law. Okay, now the whistleblower policy is one that has uh, yielded some dividends, quite uh, reasonable. W what effect do you think this kind of a uh, scenario might have on that policy? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's not going to have any negative events. I think it's going to even strengthen it because uh, uh, whistleblower policy is a policy of federal government uh, which uh, we have keyed into ourselves because a lot of people have been coming to us giving us valuable information which at the end of the day we find that that is the true position and there are others that may not be true at the end of the day. But when you are giving information to the police, as at the point you are giving the information, because that's what is under the false information, if you know at the time you are giving the information that the information is false, then you will be capable to be charged to court. Thank you, thank you. Th oh, thank, yeah. thank you very much, uh, uh, CSP Jimo Mushud, for joining us thank at this so time. Now, moving on. One instructor has died in a Nigerian Air Force Air B2 crash in Kaduna while on a mission. The Air Force, in a statement by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Olato Kumbo Adesonya indicates that a board of inquiry will be constituted to determine the immediate and remote causes of the crash. The Chief of Air Staff commiserates with the family of the lead pilot. To facilitate internet speed for the Nigerian populace and promote e-governance in the country, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, says it is working assiduously to achieve a target of 30% broadband penetration for the country in 2018. Executive Vice Chairman of the Commission, Professor Umar Dambata, said this during a collaborative visit to the FCT Minister, Muhammad Musa Belu, in Abuja. Mitari Ikbe has this story. 
The telecommunications industry has contributed a fair share to national development, accounting for 10% of GDP so far. The executive vice chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, Professor Umar Dambata, says improving broadband penetration in Nigeria, which is currently put at 21%, will require the deployment of more fiber optic cables and installation of more telecoms based stations nationwide. Hence, speedy approvals for laying of ICT infrastructure are needed from state governments. By relaxing some of the um, you know, the right of way issues that we encounter when when we attempt to deploy fiber, when we license, you know, companies to deploy fiber, especially in the in the, in the city of Abuja and uh, you know its uh, environments. But because without this deployment, there will be no improvement in quality of service. Mm -hmm. The agenda of Mr. President is to make such services inclusive, meaning for all Nigerians, no matter where they are. What their circumstances are. The FCT minister noted that NCC's quest for more ICT infrastructure tallies with the FCT administration's desire to make Abuja a smart city. We have no option but to do so because all the interventions and improvements that we want to do in traffic management, in waste disposal, in security management, uh, as well as other aspects of city management cannot be done effectively without proper ICT. He also pledged greater collaboration between the FCT administration and NCC towards protecting telecoms infrastructure in the nation's capital. In Abu Jami Taire, Ikben, NTA News. Arrangements are in advanced stage for the commencement of elaborate coverage of the 2017 Hajj by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. The 10-member crew is on ground in the Holy Land for the assignment. Abdullahi Mustafa tells us more on the preparations so far. Over the years, the Nigerian Television Authority has been involved in the coverage of annual Hajj exercise through effective reportage of happenings and issues relating to Nigerian pilgrims. For the 2017 exercise, however, the coverage will be beyond just that. Through a collaboration with the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, NTA is working towards making it a remarkable experience. As you are aware, we are going to have live broadcast. We're going to have uh, documentaries. We're going to have uh, daily reports. Apart from the special reports, we're also going to have uh, daily reports. To kickstart the program, a special editorial meeting has been held to ensure age-free operation. Leader of the crew, Muhammad Hamza Sheikh, reminded members of the need to be proactive towards making the public understand and appreciate the significance of Hajj. An opportunity, he said, has been provided for state governments, airline operators, and other stakeholders to showcase their activities and achievements during the Hajj exercise. In Medina, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. And time now for our first stop on the news tonight. And it is Lagos with Ademola as our guide. Thank you, Phil. Good evening and warm welcome to Lagos. In order to stimulate a national economic growth and human capacity development, the need for the promotion of locally made goods has been emphasized. Minister of Science and Technology, Ogbonaya Onu, represented at the forum in Lagos, said the nation's over-reliance on foreign commodities over the years has negatively affected the economy. Abolade Salami has the detail. In line with the federal government's diversification drive of the nation's economy as a major strategy of moving Nigeria's economy out of recession to the path of national prosperity, the Minister of Science and Technology, Ogbunaya Onu, represented by the Director General, Federal Institute of Industrial Research, Professor Gloria Elomo, said the national strategy to indigenous prosperity is to strengthen productivity capacity and promote consumption of goods manufactured locally. Our insatiable appetite for foreign products at the detriment of the locally made ones remains a devastating economic drain which has contributed immensely 
to economic recession in Nigeria. Abia State Governor Okeze Piazu noted that the country should promote locally made goods to enhance the growth of local manufacturers. We think that in the first place, the campaign to support made in Nigeria, the campaign to support locally produced, locally manufactured goods has lacked ownership from the beginning. The theme of the forum is the Made in Nigeria campaign and national economic revival. In Lagos, Aboladi Salami, NTA News. More winners have emerged in the ongoing Malta Guinness Go to Get It promo, which offers life transforming cash and gift prizes. Imole Ayo Tokede, who witnessed the weekly draws of the promotion in Lagos, has the details. So I said you are the lucky winner of 100,000 naira. Uzoma Henry Uchena is one of the lucky winners of 100,000 Naira in the ongoing Moto Guinness Weekly Raffle Draw in Lagos. Three other lucky consumers also emerged winners of various cash prizes. To participate in the Moto Guinness Go Get It promo, officials of the non-alcoholic drink say consumers are expected to enjoy a bottle or can of Moto Guinness and look out for a hidden 10 digits code. The populace were energizing, the youth were energizing them with what they need to be able to push to the next level. And that's why we have this promotion, which we call Win a Share of 100 Million Naira. It's the Malta Guinness Go Get It promotion. We're saying to everyone out there, go get it. What is it that is your dream, really, that we are here to, you know, fuel that dream for you? Now, all you just need to do is SMS that code with your name to 32011. The Motor Guinness Go Get It promo offers a platform for three winners of 100,000 Naira to emerge, while a Jumbo Prize winner of 1 million Naira will be produced by the promo every week. And this will be happening for the next 90 days, 13 weeks. We've already run the first two draws, and we're still going to run 11 more draws. So everyone stands a chance to be a millionaire. So I bought one carton. I opened the, can, uh, the drink, the bottle. I'm surprised. They give me card. They say that I won 100,000 Naira. I just fell down. The Motor Guinness promo which started on the 8th of August 2017 will run till 7th of November 2017. In Lagos, in Ayo Tokede, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. It's now time for us to take a break for some messages, after which the news continues shortly. Stay with us. Just hold on eh, and give the address to the driver. I beg, <laughs> hold on. Hello? <laughs> Madam, <laughs> straight off finish show. Because the party goes soon start, so... Chrissy, help me go and buy recharge card. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, everybody, let's go, let's go, let's go! <laughs> okay. Hello, Madam Salibrand. You blow sharp, sharp, eat top up, you get eight times the value of your recharge. Plus, you continue to enjoy all the airtime and data benefits on your plan. Where the credit now? Now sharp, sharp, eat up, up. I do enter your phone straight. Blood of Zachariah. Well, you know, no say eat up, up. No, they give all the plan benefits like bonus airtime and data. Now, eat up, up, they give you all the better plan benefits. Plus more. Crazy, Christy. Don't worry, I will put smart in on top of your money later. I'll be the wonder when that you feel squirming the money. Sharp, sharp, like eat up, up. Oh, very good, very good. You like money. The largest data network. Glow, grandmasters of data. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. doesn't have them. Some problems are embarrassing. Some are humiliating. Some are unsuitable. Some are testing. Some are unexplainable. 
some you just have to laugh about. And some, maybe not. Whatever life dishes you, you can always be sure you'll have one less thing to worry about when it comes to making payments, sending money, paying bills, and everyday payments. Quick Teller. Everyday payments made easy. Be informed. Post want to cap M25 Elephant 2004, the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria, which is the national regulatory and accrediting agency for medical laboratory services, will soon commence full-scale inspection of medical laboratory facilities across the country. Consequently, any person or group operating a medical laboratory facility should note that it will no longer be business as usual. It is the responsibility of every laboratory to ensure that their personnel, policies and procedures are above report. Also ensure that the facility is approved by the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria and enrolled in the National External Quality Assessment Program of the Council. This is the position of the law, and non-compliance shall attract sanctions. Bequitting a culture of accurate and reliable medical test results to Nigerians is a task that must be done. Be guided. For further details, see newspapers or visit www.mlscn.gov.ng or email info at mlscn.gov.ng or better still, visit the headquarters of the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria near Living Faith Church, Durimi Fest 2, Abuja, signed management. <laughs> You're still watching Network News at 9. Nigeria bond auction raises 56 billion naira, less than half of bond amount of offer. Chazala Miki has details of this and more on Business News. Good evening and a warm welcome to Business News. Latest release from the National Bureau of Statistics indicates that capital inflow into Nigeria for the second quarter covering April to June 2017 increased by over 95.02% with the total value of capital inflow into Nigeria in the second quarter put at $1.79 million. What does this portend given the fact that loans have continued to dominate other investments. Being a developing country, Nigeria cannot afford to go it alone. We will need the support of countries that have experienced the um, development traje trajectory. So Nigeria, no doubt, will need the support of, uh, of Europe. Uh, look at the recent capital importation report that was um, released by the National Bureau of Statistics. The largest source of capital importation into the country, you know, happens to be the UK. And that's because of our um, historical ties with um, the United Kingdom. And to the bond market, Nigeria raised a total of 56.05 billion naira at a bond auction on Wednesday, less than half the amount on offer as domestic pension funds and insurance firms cut demand due to low yields. The Debt Management Office, DMO, put 135 billion naira worth of bonds maturing in 2021, 2027 and 2037 on offer. And to the stock market report, it's been a mixed bag on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange with experts given their expectations in the coming week. I don't expect anything dramatic to happen between now and the end of September. Um, a lot of people will be very cautious, especially in the, in, in the wake of these numerous hate species. Some people want to hold, stay by the fence and still have all these pan out. And here is a graphical illustration of how the market fed this Thursday. That's it on Business News. I'm Chia Zalameki. The news continues. Please stay with us. Thank you, Chia Zalam. Now let's join Nana in Sokoto for more on Network News. Good evening, Theo, and welcome to the seat of the Caliphate. Sokoto State Government says it is devising ways of reversing unhealthy outlook on the Human Development Dashboard to make the state better. Governor Aminu Waziri Tambo stated this while inaugurating the Sokoto State Advocacy and Community Engagement Forum in Sokoto. Dalhatu Abdullahi has the report. 
The focus of the advocacy forum is on matters of improved health care, enrollment and retention of populace in schools, as well as provision of clean water and enhanced sanitation practices among the people. During the three-day workshop, the forum is expected to prepare a five-year action plan for implementation through 2018 to 2022 to achieve the set objectives of changing the people's life for the better. Declaring the workshop open, Governor Amin Waziri Tambol said government will provide the needed resources to guarantee successful implementation implementation of the action plan and challenged stakeholders in the change forum to take necessary steps to make it happen. In her goodwill message, the deputy country representative to UNICEF, Pamela Ironside, said the fund is working with government to make life better through education, improved public health, sanitary practices, and provision of clean water to the people. Sultan of Sokoto Muhammad Sa'ad Abaka III said advocacy on education and effective health care delivery has been a central issue of the Sokoto Kali for decades, while saying they will work hard to make the impact of the partnership felt by the entire population, the Sultan said his council will organize a seminar on girl child education before the end of 2017. In Sokoto, Dalat Abdullahi, NTA News. More than 980 communities have been captured in the second phase of sanitation, hygiene, and water in Nigeria, Sean 2 project in three local government areas of Zamfara State, scheduled to take off in September this year. This came to the fore during an assessment visit of the DFID's team to the state. Jamilu Ibrahim Gusal has more. Sanitation, hygiene and water supply in Nigeria, Shaun 2, is a project currently being implemented in Zamfara and some five other states in Nigeria. A team from the DFID was in Zamfara State to assess the implementation of the project within the last one year. The team was conducted around some of the benefiting communities in Telata Mafara local government area by officials of the state rural water supply and sanitation agency. The communities benefited from solar-powered boreholes, toilet and sanitation facilities, among other things. The team undertook house-to-house -house visit to ascertain the household compliance with the construction of latrines and use of hand social materials in the benefiting communities. It also interacted with members of the communities on their perception of the project and possible ways to maximize its impact. More than 1,220 communities are currently participating in the Sean 2 project from Birna Magaji to Lata Mafrans, a few local government area of the state. And the project will be extended to some other three local governments in September this year. Ngusawu Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Well, that does it here for the news. Back to Abuja. Thanks, Nana. The Federal Road Safety Commission has been commended for its tremendous achievement in reducing road crashes, but could do more because Nigeria has the potential to improve road safety. United Nations Secretary General's Envoy for Road Safety, Jean Tot, and guests at the seventh FROC annual lecture series on road safety awareness gave the commendation in Abuja. Emmanuel Aimiro completes the story. Post-Status report on road safety predicted that about 1.9 million people might die from road crashes annually by 2020 if no action is taken, while 90% of road crashes and injuries occur in low-income countries like Nigeria. Nigeria is already implementing the UN Decade of Action for Road Safety 2011 to 2020, which sets the goals for road safety management, which the theme of the FRSC annual lecture wants to achieve. We need safer roads and infrastructure, safer vehicles, safer user behavior, better legislation. Minister of State, Power, Works and Housing, Suleiman Hassan, delivered the message of the Vice President, Yemi Osimbajo. It is gratifying to know that Nigeria, as an active member of the United Nations, has been unrelenting in its commitment to fighting the scourge of road traffic crashes in the country and the West African subregion through involvement of various measures. Other speakers Absolutely. include His Imperial Majesty, the Orni of Ife, who was the chairman at the occasion, charged the youth in particular to support FRSC initiatives by complying with road safety measures. I want to appeal and also thank the United Nations. We still need their input. I believe sustaining the safe system approach 
we see Nigeria being in the top 20 safest roads in the world by 2020. Road safety is said to be the responsibility of everyone, and no one must be left out to enhance safety. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. Ameze in Benin has the next report. Over to you, Ameze. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Benin. Edo State Government has distributed 2.6 million free, long-lasting insecticide mosquito nets. The exercise underscores the fact that consistent and appropriate use of insecticide mosquito net is still the most effective method of preventing malaria. Ogochukuka Ona reports. Records show that about 97% of Nigerians are affected by malaria arising from mosquito bites with at least 6 million women worldwide at risk of malaria in pregnancy contributing at least 10,000 maternal deaths and about 200,000 newborn deaths annually. Lack of awareness and poverty have been pinpointed as the factors determining the prevalence. With this in mind, the Edo State Government, through the just concluded distribution of 2.6 million nets, says it is set to kick out malaria out of the state as it is improving on the 1.2 million distributed in 2012. I appreciate what the government is doing because malaria is something that one should not play with. If you don't get my mosquito nets, I thank the government. We appreciate it. For this net, it prevents mosquito. Every household armed with a net card got at least one net as the program aims at creating net culture. If you feed help person, make sure say it get net, mosquito, uh, mosquito nets. Mosquito not by time. It will get malaria. My ministry will continue to work with our partners to ensure we win this war against malaria. A joint effort of the National Malaria Elimination Program in collaboration with Rollback Malaria Program and Catholic Relief Services. The initiative is under the Net Replacement Campaign funded by the 2 billion Naira Global Fund with six states as beneficiaries. In Benin, Ogochkuka Ona, NT News. Taking another break now, we will be back. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAFDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service, NAFDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAPDAC in reading the country of pet drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAPDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAPDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. <laughs> And Tamara Biwi has the sports update. Minister of Youth and Sports Development